Hi, I'm Mike. The ranch life has been pretty quiet here for a bit. Cold temperatures that dip as low as 20 below have drove us inside. But there are a few things that are time sensitive and some time frames don't wait for weather. The overall business of ranching is all about beef and we have steers that have a very important appointment coming up soon that we have to get them ready for as we start grain finishing the steers on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to Our Wyoming Life. Please subscribe and continue to join us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. And hit that little bell button so you don't miss a thing. The ranch is a place where life and death happens almost every single day. As you know, we weren't born and raised here. So when we came to the ranch, there was a little bit of a learning curve of figuring out how to run the place. But there was also the process of learning the emotion of the ranch and the toll that it can take on you. Our first winter here, I fed the cows. And that spring, although we had a much smaller herd than we have now, I helped them calve. And luckily, we didn't lose a single calf that year. In fact, our first year here, I didn't have to deal with death of any livestock. And it was probably a good thing because I'm not sure how I would have handled it. Oddly enough, I didn't have much of a connection to the animals that first year we were here. We weren't really planning on staying. So it was just a job to help out family. But when my father-in-law passed away, the entire game changed. If we would have lost a cow or a calf in that first year, chances are I would have just brushed it off, mostly because I didn't have that connection or know the importance of it as I do now. Since Gilbert died, we've become more involved in the ranch life. We've given up on other careers to concentrate on the ranch and how we can build a life out of it, not only for us, but for our kids and Aaron's mom, who lives right here on the ranch as well. With Gilbert gone, I lost that safety net. All of a sudden, I was ultimately responsible for every life out here. At that time, it was just cows and calves, maybe a few chickens, but they were all under my care, day in and day out. Chickens were raised just for egg production. We didn't butcher any. If a chicken died, it was due to old age or a predator. Cows were raised as breeding stock, and yes, their calves were sold at the end of the year, but their fate was out of my hands. They went on to possibly become part of somebody else's herd or to feed lots where they were raised for butcher. At that time, I didn't have a direct hand in the destiny of any animal that was headed to your dinner plate, but now that has changed. Erin at some point decided she wanted to sell beef at our local farmer's market beef that was raised right here on the ranch. That opened up a whole new avenue for business for her and for the ranch. And we both agreed that in the long run, it would not only help the ranch, but it also help our community and our customers, allowing them to purchase beef that they knew exactly what went into it and where and how it was raised. This began a few years of trial and error. We first talked to our customers about what they would prefer grass finished beef or grain finished. Put simply, grain finished means cows that have eaten hay and grass most of their lives and are get, then given a grain supplement for the last 60 to 90 days. That grain adds fat and marbling to the meat that some people find desirable. Grass finished means that the cows only eat forage, hay or grass, until they reach butcher weight. Because of the plant-based diet, grass-fed beef is leaner and usually with less fat. We also had to take into account our area, our climate, and our capabilities. It generally takes three times longer to finish cattle on grass than on grain, adding to the cost of grass-finished beef. If we had year-round grazing, that would probably work, but it did turn out to be a cost that we couldn't absorb and may account to why only 3% of U.S. beef comes from grass-finished cattle. So we decided to grain finish our cows, but we market it as grass-fed and grain-finished because unfortunately when people hear grain-finished or grain-fed, they think that's all that cow ever ate, and that couldn't be farther from the truth. The steers that we choose to keep back for this process are hand-picked out of our crop of calves. For the past two years, they've been eating pasture grass and hay over the winter, 
That by definition makes them grass-fed cattle. But now, as they grow, it's time to begin the finishing process. Through trial and error, like I said, we have come up with a program for our steers and the finishing of them. The health of our animals is very important to us, as is the health and satisfaction of our customers. None of our steers are given antibiotics or growth hormones, and if one got sick, well, of course we'd care for it, and if needed, it could get antibiotics, but it would then not be sold to the public. We always begin by graining our steers slowly. In fact, we don't even start them on grain. We want them to get used to other foods in their bellies. And we'll start the finishing process with a feed that's usually fed to show calves called Accelerator. It includes not only processed grains for improved digestibility, but trace minerals and vitamins to combat stress. Moving these steers from pasture to corral will cause stress. And this feed, along with blocks that are given to them to combat bloat, which is gas pressure that can be caused by the change in feed, is the best way to introduce them to this new environment. This supplemental feed is given to them once per day at the rate of only a few pounds per day per steer. They still have access to hay, which will compose a major part of their diet. After a few weeks of transition time, these steers will then be switched to their grain ration. We don't feed them straight corn, but we do give them a mix of corn, oats, and barley. This is what is going to add the marbling and fat to the meat, increasing the flavor and tenderness. They'll be started on it very slowly, only a pound a piece, and slowly ramped up to a max grain ration of about 20 pounds per day over a period of about 90 days. Starting slowly is the key. Too much grain too fast and the cow can't digest it all. It moves right through them. Their system does need to adjust to it. Currently, these steers weigh about 800 to 1,000 pounds. In 90 days, they're gonna tip the scale with the heaviest, probably around 1,200 pounds. Then it'll be time for them to go and leave the ranch, where I have a direct involvement in moving an animal from the ranch to your plate. But now I'm invested. I've cared for these steers since the day they were born here on the ranch. I've lost sleep, I've been cold, sometimes even bled to give them the best life that I can. At the same time, I am proud to be able to provide not only for your family, but my own. In a way, your family is mine. We eat the same beef, and I'm happy to put in the work that provides for us all. Just so you know, I'm not trying to snowball anybody here. It is true that grass-finished beef has a higher level of vitamin A, vitamin E, and omega-3 fatty acids. But I will say, is beef the best place to get these nutrients? I mean, salmon or walnuts are actually much higher in omega-3s, and I guess for vitamin A or vitamin E, you can have a salad. Really, all beef, no matter how it's raised, is an excellent source of B vitamins, protein, zinc, and iron. As long as you're eating beef, I'm happy. Soon, we'll have beef jerky back up for sale on our website. And we're playing with the idea of how to ship beef directly to you, although shipping will still be expensive, and we urge you to find a local producer in your area. But if you want to bring home some of the ranch, hopefully soon you will have that option. With this process starts, begins a, a whole new era on the ranch. One of production, but also reality. Thanks for being a part of what really of what it really takes to get food to your table. Please subscribe. We're only weeks away from calving and then it's spring and things heat up fast. You don't want to miss a thing, that's for sure. Thanks for coming out today. Until I see you again, have a great week and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. Man, it is cold out here. <laughs> <laughs>